Welcome to my session, Open Office Org Development, the that means. Uh, my name is Jeff Grund. I'm working at Sun Microsystems in Hamburg. And I'm basically here to tell you how good the idea is to develop um, good methods for Open Office Org. <coughs> Our agenda today, I'll um, make a short introduction, go into some detailed stuff, and And um, most important, I'll do a demonstration of what I'm talking about at the end. And afterwards, we have hopefully time for some questions and answers. And answers. <coughs> okay, first thing, we have NetBeans, a powerful IDE for Java development. And um, we have OpenOffice.org, where programming in Java is popular. I have no data to support this statement. <laughs> Uh, is it is. It's my feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> I believe it. Um, so we have created something that we call the OpenOffice.org plugin for NetBeans. So it's not NetBeans alone. You need an additional tool that will help you to create programs for OpenOffice.org. Um, the idea behind it is um, to lower the initial learning barrier uh, when you want to program for, <coughs> for OpenOffice.org. Um, you have to learn, you know, some configuration stuff, etc. And we'd like to help you with that. The OpenOffice.org plugin is currently available in version 1.1.0 since the day before yesterday. <laughs> so this is brand new. <coughs> content of this plugin, you have some configuration part, you have the context sensitive help, some wizard file support and some actions. I'll go into the later, the, the later part in detail, um, but this is the only time I mentioned the context sensitive help, so I'll um, explain a bit more. We have a context sensitive help, so pressing F1 or pressing the help button anywhere inside of the plugin in NetBeans will bring up help files for the plugin. So um, this is quite a good idea sometimes when you don't know what to do, uh, especially since um, the help files normally include some links to openoffice.org websites where you find closer information for the stuff that you want to do. <coughs> what do you need? You need obviously openoffice.org and the OpenOffice.org SDK installed on your computer. And um, that is part of the um, configuration of the OpenOffice.org plugin. You need to tell the plugin where OpenOffice and the SDK is installed. You can, as part of the configuration, um, enter a login directory. That's more, that's more for me. When the OpenOffice.org plugin does not what it should, um, you can send me the log and I can look what happened. <laughs> <coughs> How do you get the plugin? That's quite easy. You have a NetBeans version and the plugin is available in the NetBeans Update Center. So, uh, <coughs> I don't know if you work with NetBeans. Um, you may be aware of the Update Center. You go on Tools and Update Center and get a list of available plugins and the plugin for openoffice.org is part of that. We're available for NetBeans 5.5 and 5.5.1, but not yet for NetBeans 6.0. Um, there's a better one version of NetBeans 6.0 available at the moment, but we are not really working with it. Not well. And um, the platforms you can use is Linux, Solaris, Windows and Macintosh. Macintosh, unfortunately, with limitations. Uh, which are not caused by NetBeans or the plugin, but more problems with OpenOffice.org on, um, on the Macintosh platform. Okay. <coughs> this is, oh, at this point I'd like to ask a question. Uh, which one of you did already try out the plugin on NetBeans? Two and a half. <laughs> okay. Okay. 
So this will be quite new for you. Is this great? <coughs> Um, this is the part where I go into details what you get with the plug in NetBeans. Um, you get four kinds of, of project wizards. Um, the first one is the client application wizard. You create an OpenOffice.org client. You get some code generated automatically, um, so you can um, start programming with the uh, X component context. Everything else is done for you. And um, when you package your client application, um, you get even the view code from uh, the SDK inside. So um, OpenOffice.org is bootstrapped and connected when it's running on the current machine. Apart from that, the client application wizard is boring. Um, there's nothing else to say. More interesting are the other uh, wizards. Um, first, I'd like to mention there's a component wizard you generate a general extension with it. Um, some package that gets installed in OpenOffice.org and extends the functionality of OpenOffice.org, an OXT package. <coughs> Component wizard is the general version of this. Um, Add-on wizard and calc add-in wizard are special versions. Add-on wizard is an extension for OpenOffice.org with um, some UI support the toolbar or a, a menu entry. And the calc add-in wizard um, creates an extension that extends calc with your own, um, with your own function. Something that's not, um, not yet accessible or not yet um, there in calc. You also get file support. We support IDL files. Um, syntax highlighting. I'm afraid there's no auto completion for IDL files. Um, that's because I, I would have to uh, implement this myself. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that's not, not, not that easy, so this is missing. But at least I implemented the syntax highlighting myself. Um, you get um, file support for configuration files, it's UNIXCS files. There you get syntax highlighting and you get auto completion. That's because they are basically XML files and that means I support XML files, so I just have to plug in some functionality from that means I don't have to do anything myself. And um, this is a huge part. We support the description XML. Don't remember any faces. Um, if you were in, um, in the presentation by Joachim Lina this morning, um, you already know about description XML. Um, description XML is a file that's inside of an um, OXT package uh, with support of um, extension version and identifier of the extension, um, some dependencies on um, the OpenOffice.org version that the extension um, has to run in, an update URL and uh, license files for the extension. <coughs> and we have some, um, some kind of UI around this description XML which you can use inside of things. According to um, file support, there are some file wizards. Um, you can create empty XS and XU files, nothing to it. You go to the file wizard, get an empty file, fine. You can create new implementation objects for existing services or interfaces. Um, it doesn't matter if these services or interfaces are <coughs> OpenOffice.org or if you created them yourself. If they're available from the project view, so to say, um, you can create a Java implementation for it. Um, in case of the service, the implementation will, uh, will be taken into your, uh, into your extension and when you register your extension in OpenOffice.org, the service will be available without, um, you don't have to do anything about this, this happens automatically. Um, something similar, you can always create new IDL definition files. Um, we have all supported types available, and you can 
in case the new IDL definition is an interface or a service, you directly specify that there is an implementation object created as well. And the same again, when it's a service, um, the implementation object is already part of your extension. So when you register the extension in openoffice.org, you can um, use this service. Okay? Then there are some actions. Um, actions are generally available from the context menu of your project in NetBeans. Um, you can compile one single IDL file. You can create an <coughs> office extension, meaning your stuff gets compiled, starting with the IDL files, of course. Then Java files, then everything is packaged. And um, the end product is an OXT file that can be registered in openoffice.org. You can deploy the extension directly in openoffice.org. So um, from then on, it can be used there. You can deploy and run openoffice.org, meaning after deployment, openoffice is started for you. So you can look if your extension works. And this is, um, I'm so proud of it. <laughs> you can debug your extension automatically. So there's a target in the context menu where you say debug it and the extension is registered in OpenOffice, OpenOffice is started and um, then you have to trigger in OpenOffice that which starts your extension and any breakpoint in your code will be reached. If you've done this, this by hand any time You'll probably know that this is really a task if you don't have any support for it. <clears throat> okay, and then there's um, the extension properties. What I said earlier, um, we support description XML. So um, you can uh, reach the UI for the description XML over the context menu of your project. So. Still some more. Um, we now support custom manifest files. Uh, if you know you have a, a manifest entry in your extension um, telling the office um, what, um, what must be registered and stuff like that, you can create, uh, there's an automatic creation process of the manifest file during the creation of the package, but you can enter your own manifest file and override. The, uh, the automatic process. Any entry you do in your custom manifest file will not be, uh, will not be uh, overwritten. You can package external jars into your, um, your extension. Um, this is, um, we grab jars that you uh, are added with uh, the normal NetBeans functionality for this. Um, if you've done that, the jars get copied inside your extension and um, get delivered with your extension into the office. Um, we update older projects to new versions. That is, uh, if you have an, a project that is um, created with an earlier version of the NetBeans plugin, 1.0 for example, uh, you may not have all the features in this project, so we update it for you. Next thing, you get some, I uh, don't know if you know this, NetBeans uses end for compiling and, and everything, and we uh, be plugged into this, uh, this functionality, and you get end targets to override. Meaning, um, when a package is created, you can um, um, create your own targets, what should be done with the package after it is created. And this will be done every time you call um, create OXT. And we have a central registration class. This is important for um, what I said earlier. Um, when you create a new service implementation, uh, this class is um, um, this class does uh, the registering for you when you um, add the package to OpenOffice.org. Okay. So, last part before the demonstration starts. Um, what do we plan in the future for the plugin? 
um, we'd like to add some specialized file wizards for uh, calc add-ins and add-ons. At the moment, um, these project types are, are separate. When you create an add-on, you create a project with UI support. You don't create a project which intends calc with all functionality. And you have, to, you can with, um, with some, um, some hacking of your own, so to say, um, add calc functionality into this project, but we, don't not, we do not support any, um, any automatism for this. So if you like to, uh, to do this, you have to, um, to, have to start um, doing it on your own. And the plan for the future is um, to simplify stuff like that. So that uh, if an extension is an extension, and what it uh, brings to openoffice.org is, um, uh, is only your idea as, an, as a developer. Okay, we like to support um, option pages. I'm not quite sure how this will look like. And um, what is meant with this is um, uh, we have some, we will have some kind of UI for uh, the option pages. Um, because support is, should have written something else. Um, we already support stuff like that. Um, and if you'd like to, uh, to see how this can be done, you have to come to, uh, to Jürgen's uh, what is workshop. It? workshop. To Jürgen's workshop at 5? I think 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. At 5 o'clock in the afternoon today. <coughs> what is the time? What was the name of that workshop? Oh, it, was, it was quite new. It was developing extensions with Java and NetBeans in practice or something like that. Okay. Um, great idea is always C++ support, um, especially since NetBeans 6.0 will uh, bring C++ support uh, with it. Yeah, it's always a question of, um, of time. And lastly, the library API wrapper project type. This is, um, um, we generate um, uh, a, a base for the plugin to um, to help using the API of um, of OpenOffice.org. Yeah, this is the the farther down we go, the further in the future <laughs> this stuff will be. I think. Um, this is so small that you won't be able to read it, but. Um, for anything around the API plugin, it's always good to look into our um, wiki page on the uh, wiki of openoffice.org. And um, for anything around extension programming or openoffice.org programming, it's always good to look inside the developer's guide on the openoffice.org page. Um, I mean, this is um, available online, so even if you can't read it, um, uh, on the screen, you can always look later into it. Okay, we the demonstration. Um, any questions oh. until now? Uh, yes. Uh, I, I think I actually looked for that in the uh, in, in the online uh, version of the developer's guide, and I didn't find it. So you're sure it's written there? <laughs> what what written? What is written there? The the, the, uh, the uh, description of the uh, the documentation of the extension. Uh, yeah, it is there. It is there. Yeah. Okay. And also the uh, intro page for the developer's guide now contains links directly to the extension chapter, to the scripting frame, framework chapter, and a further new chapter related to graphical user interface. Mm. And, but the whole stuff will probably move in a few weeks into the wiki. So the improvement will be to get future and faster updates and the documentation stuff.
I'll start by creating a new project and this should be an openoffice.org add-on meaning I will create an extension with some UI support and I click next okay um, the project name will be Earthview um, yeah. If anyone knows about this NASA project, you probably know where this is heading. I only create a toolbar, um, don't want a menu entry. I leave everything as default, what you normally shouldn't do. Uh, the package is really just, um, you have something there. That's not really a good package name. Okay. This is the UI where I can um, define the commands. Commands meaning um, any entry in a toolbar or, um, or a menu, when clicked, will trigger this command. Um, command must have a unique name, so I leave this. I will add an icon. Oh, I have one here. Okay. Um, the command does have a display name, which is not, uh, not so important for a toolbar, but of course it's what you see when you have a menu. In, in the office. Um, the display name can be uh, localized and there's uh, the possibility to add um, languages. All languages supported which are supported from OpenOffice.org. So quite interesting. Okay, then I get to define the toolbar. Um, Nothing, nothing much to do. You could uh, determine when you have more commands in which order they appear in the toolbar and um, more important you get to, um, to determine in, uh, in which application in the office the toolbar is visible. So if you create a toolbar that's only for calc it doesn't make sense that it's visible in writer. So you can determine it's only uh, visible in spreadsheet. Um, this is, um, when you don't check anything, it doesn't mean it's not visible, it means it is visible everywhere. And you can have a preview, so if I check uh, and go on chart, you see nothing in chart. You only see it in didn't I click spreadsheet? Oh no! Oh! My <laughs> yeah, focus problem. <laughs> okay. Well, I clicked spreadsheet. So, um, that's about it for creation of the project. So, what I get now is quite a few stuff. Um, I get my registration class. I'll get um, the generated Java class. This I have to. Um, this is uh, what I have to implement. Here gets uh, the command executed. My own code should start here. I'll get um, some configuration files for creating the menu, uh, sorry, the toolbar in the office. And um, I get um, a basic description XML file. I'll show the UI around the description XML. That's OXT extension properties. If you click on this, um, these are the properties that are currently um, supported from the UI. You get, um, this is some kind of um, suggestion for a unique identifier of your extension. Um, it's created from, um, from the package name of, uh, of your project and the project name itself. Um, it should be as unique as possible, so uh, um, using this um, um, reverse domain name. Thank you. <laughs> using the reverse domain name name domain name 
as, um, as the start of the package is, uh, is suggested. To get an initial version of your extension, 0.0.1, uh, it's, um, yeah, that is what you start with, my idea can enter any number. This is not, um, we suggest that you use um, this free number system for, uh, for the versioning, but uh, this is just an, an arbitrary entry. It can be anything. Okay. Um, shortly, this is a dependency. On what OpenOffice org version does your extension depend on? Um, this is available since uh, version 2.1, I think. And it's, um, it's possible to say that your version of, uh, th that your extension only works with version 2.3 of, of OpenOffice, for example. You may have an update URL for your extension to, um, to enable the, automatically, uh, the automatic update for extensions. You can enter this here. It will take you from here into the description XML. And you can add a license. Um, there are two possibilities for uh, accepting the license. Either user or administrator must do this. Um, I keep it on user. And I have indeed one license to add. Um, licenses are also localized. So here is again the list of available languages, but there is always one license that is the default. So if you have five languages supported and, um, and someone uh, registers this in, um, in a language you don't support, you get the default license text. So usually this uh, would be English. So, okay. Now I have also a license. Now to the coding part. Um, I try to keep this as short as possible. I create a new class. And say this class is visible. The user P in the front. Oh. I only did this to see if you well, still <laughs> pay attention. <laughs> okay. Um, obviously, the class is not there, so I have to create it. Still have some time? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I, I know, I have already uh, pressed next <laughs> Oh no, it's
wants Java. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oof, yeah. now that you've already seen something from it? Uh, I, I, uh, I, I tried it some, uh, some time ago, but I didn't really uh, succeed to find out how to get uh, in touch with the, uh, the Office uh, API. But maybe you would, you, uh, you would show that in, in a little further. Uh, you don't have any problem with getting access to Yeah, I just office. need, uh, it's probably very easy, I just okay. need to, to uh, when you, for example, okay. use an add-on, I close this. When you, for example, use an add-on, you get an, you have an um, private variable um, frame, MX frame, or something like that. And from a frame, in this case, it is the entry point to the office. So a frame has a model, a controller, and a model, and then you've got the document model, which is currently behind this add-on, yeah. and then you can reach over the document model. Yes, the normal API, and you have also um, variable for the global office context, which is the main entry point mm -hmm. for everything. But it's, it's the exact command for getting the global uh, office context. I, I, uh, it is already there in the generated source code. You have mm -hmm. private variable, MX, MX context, mm -hmm. or something like that, and from the context you can simply, simply call get service manager, and then you can create every service from scratch. Image context. And uh, yeah. Okay, okay. I think that explains everything. Or something at least. But for in case of an add-on, the normal entry point would be the frame. Over the frame you would reach the model of the frame and then you can work on the document model, for example, and you can ma manipulate the document and stuff like that. Um, in case of a, um, a general component, you start with the next component context have to go on from there. Maybe I've... It's, a, it's the same entry point as when you use the client application with it. Yeah, but I've never done that, so... Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, this... Oh, no. This, <coughs> this is the existing project. <laughs> okay. Um, just to... Just to show again, no, not again, just to show the first time. Um, you get the component context in the constructor of, uh, of the main class of your project. And um, I have to look inside. Yeah, um, you get the frame for the project in the initialized method of, of this one. So you have the component context to work at, and you have the actual frame from which your um, extension is started. Um, that's what's, what makes it so important that the extension is, is only visible in uh, the part of the application where it's meant to be, because you'll get uh, a different frame in a writer document than you'll get in a Calc document. And if you, if you expect something from Calc and someone in writer manages to start your extension, it will fail miserably. Yeah. Okay. 
So, now that things are working again, I need this one. So, I have No? It's called World Fun Weather. It's uh, okay. No, yeah. Oh, W and then. Okay, that's a nice feature in NetBeans. You can. Normally, <laughs> this is not my day. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll do the. I'll do the hacker stuff. <laughs> so I'm just pleased to see that I'm not the only person that has these kind of troubles with the IDE. <laughs> <laughs> I hope in the afternoon it will work um, better because I will use the same laptop. <laughs> <laughs> um, I normally don't don't have these problems, but I'm. Uh, um, I'm a profound liar, so... <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, what's also strange is that I don't get any... I'm trying to compile it. I should get some error messages that classes aren't found. I'm quite curious why I don't. Or... Something is wrong. Okay. This is not the error I expected. Ah, yes, okay. Don't care. What I mean is, I have to add some jar files for this. I just use, um, like I said earlier, I just use uh, the normal um, NetBeans way for adding jars. This, this button, which opens, thankfully enough, on the correct folder. And I add these jars. These jars get um, packaged into the extension automatically and referenced in there. Though when the extension is uh, deployed in OpenOffice.org, stuff from these packages yes. is used. Um, you don't have anything to do with it. Okay. So now the extension should be able to create. No. Oh my. Ah, the constructor has a long name. Funny. Okay, this is the extension. And now I'd like to present, hopefully, my debug feature. I click on debug extension and target open office. The first thing that happens is that the package is deployed. And you see the license I added. Whenever you deploy, I clicked on user, so everyone has to uh, accept the license. So whenever this is um, registered in OpenOffice.org, the license will pop up, even if it's just for debugging features. So add the license <coughs> at the last. <laughs> What's special about um, debugging an extension is that um, you get an own user installation for this. The idea is you have your own extension, perhaps in um, some initial state, and using it in OpenOffice.org does break your user installation. Um, you wouldn't want to happen this on your normal user installation that you work on with uh, OpenOffice.org. So we create a user installation inside of the uh, NetBeans project. Uh, meaning, if you uh, make a clean build of your extension, the, um, the user installation that you use for debugging is thrown away. It would be so. nice if those user interface steps could be 
automate and zip through if you're going to go through this process a number of times. It's not only the first time. Okay. It's Ah, uh, so the second time you go through, it's not really creating yeah, 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 of course. Of course. The first time yeah. a user installation is created, you have to go through these steps. You could you could change the, um, the configuration file with a with a yeah, like NetBeans, NetBeans plugin to to avoid this first time. Yeah, but but yeah. We, yeah. we don't want to avoid it because yeah. you only have to at the first time, and it should be the same behavior as you would use the office in, in the normal way. Yeah, this is, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, I think it's a bad idea to compromise the way the office works when you try to debug something. You want it as original as, as possible. Yeah. So, that's what you get. Okay, this is my toolbar. I click on it. And after some time, oh no. I did say it didn't I? I think so. Yeah. This is not funny. It's still not funny. Okay, this is what this thing does. Uh, it's this uh, Java uh, NASA project uh, for viewing the Earth, and um, they have a, um, a Java um, API for this. So I just plug it in. Be fun. Oops. Sorry. Uh, around here somewhere. Okay. Um. On the wrong side of Spain. Hmm? No. I don't, I don't think so. No, already. It's a lot in this side. In the middle. Uh, yes, here. Yeah, I thought so. Um, okay, this this stuff is normally uh, taken from the internet, um, so it only works for um, uh, when you have uh, um, a connection open. Um, but they do um, um, they do buffer these things, and I already looked. On Barcelona before, so <laughs> any place else wouldn't work like this. Okay, but There are people yeah, inside this room that, that already have seen it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, take another break from perhaps it's okay. So the second time should be faster. This is not Okay. The office is and it's a trap I always fall into. Do not use the quick starter in case you want to debug something with the open office. You get the version that's already that's already running. You don't get a new one. Okay? Okay, last try. If this doesn't work, I go home. <laughs> Yes. 
now. I find that on Windows, when you use OpenOffice and you, you exit the quick starter, it doesn't always exit the right process. Check, check, check. Yeah, that's one thing. I still have my presentation running. <laughs> but check this in Task Manager. There's Control Shift to Escape office. Kill Sophos. Yes. Uh, oh, task Manager is always already open. So. Click on the. That's it. No office process. Uh, so, finally, now really the last draft. <laughs> um, problem with stuff like this is. You, don't, you must have an office where the Java Virtual Machine is not running yet. You have to convince the Java Virtual Machine that it is debugged. So um, that's not possible when it's already running. You only have the possibility to do this if you start a virtual machine. So the office must be started in you. If you have a quick starter running with an open office process in the background or open office anywhere else, it will not work. Like this all. And although... I know this stuff. Oh, uh, no. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not today. Anyway, hopefully it works in the afternoon. Yeah. Normally it works quite well and it simplifies the whole development of extensions quite a lot. And speed up the initial steps, everything which comes again and again, like the registration stuff and the initial code generation for new UNO objects can be automated or simplified with some kind of research. And yeah, it helps a lot for at least Java extensions. And the advantage of Java extensions is also that they are platform independent. More or less, you could only do some system specific stuff. Any more questions? Do you have any thought as to when the 6.0 version might be available? You saw the universe? Okay, um, when NetBean 6.0 is officially available, it will be available also. That's what we plan. But um, if there's some, some version intermediate with uh, some NetBeans uh, beta version of 6.0, I'm not, not quite sure. If it's not, what doesn't work in NetBeans 6.0 is not really great st or, or big stuff, but um, it's annoying somehow. No, don't look, this is just for me. Sometimes it's a good idea to restart NetBeans, I think. <laughs> yes! <laughs> now we can. Great point accomplished. Yeah, okay, next step. Um, just to show, you have the frame here from, from the current running office. And you also have, as local variable, the context set. Mm. So, 
try this out and I would love some feedback even if you write me bugs <laughs> I, I don't take bugs personally <laughs> <laughs> write me millions versus <laughs> bugs be fine to you die yep yeah, to you die using, using the normal issue uh, tracker and use component SDK component that means integration um, okay. we have uh, uh, um, a link prepared on the wiki page of the plugin for the, for the bugs to us. So, obviously, we're quite confident. 